Hello everyone and welcome. It's a new true crime story here, finally. And today's case I wanted to make on Halloween, but I didn't make it. So I'm bringing it to you today. I have to warn you because this story is very, very brutal. So it's up to you if you want to hear it. So today crime story is about a Stefan Swedek and today we will look at Slovakia as I said a very brutal story. So in 1987 uh, Stefan murdered his pregnant wife and two little kids and that's Oh, horrible. Well, let's start from the beginning uh, with childhood, youth, adolescence and the first crimes. What uh, Stefan did. So Stefan wasn't right from the start. That was obvious. You'll see. Uh, so he was born on January uh, 23rd 1960s his family lived alone by the forest uh, they were acquired poor so they had not much money uh, and he had four siblings uh, and his mother had a heart disease uh, which she was fighting with it uh, a lot but unfortunately she died uh, because of it, of the heart disease, uh, when Stefan was uh, 18 years old. Uh, the father was an alcoholic, he was aggressive. Uh, his family experienced uh, domestic violence from him. Uh, and that's horrible and it's sad but it happens a lot uh, from the fathers he was very very strict uh, in raising the kids uh, by which i mean he beat the children uh, used physical punishments uh, such as the children had to kneel on the grater like can you imagine that that's horrible or on something sharp, for example, piece of wood, something like that. Well, I believe a be parent of five must be really hard. Uh, but this is too much. This is just not right. And I think I'm not uh, only one who thinks that. I read the version of the uh, psychological assessment and it's very likely that these harsh physical punishments uh, to which he was subjected when he was child, uh, Stefan, uh, it affected him into the future. Stefan took the violence uh, what was in the family as as normal as something that just happens well that's uh what to say like you could think that he want to his family to be better than when he was a child uh, yeah, that doesn't excuse him at all for what he did, uh, but we will get to that. Like when you were, uh, you were, you had a bad childhood, does not excuse you that you are the same as your father. So he started going to school at the age of six. But he didn't study well at all. He didn't understand the learning and he didn't even have any effort for the school. And not only when he was young, but also uh, in, in uh, later life. So when he was uh, older, nothing changed much. 
he didn't care about school at all so uh, he didn't go to school very re <laughs> regularly and he didn't do well there he didn't really had any hobbies it is said that uh, he sometimes played uh, the harmonica but that was all mm, nothing else he, he didn't do anything uh, as a hobby and something for fun uh, nothing and he started smoking a lot of cigarettes uh, at a very young age well even a one cigarette is too much and you were a kid right and I always when I see kids outside smoking I can't believe it and it's happening I don't know what's the truth about it but I found information that he smoked up to 40 cigarettes a day and that's crazy like can you imagine that 40 cigarettes that's insane and it wasn't just a cigarettes he also started drinking alcohol at a very young age and at the age of 13 um, he had his first sexual experience well after the elementary school so when he finished uh, the elementary school he was supposed to learn to be a bricklayer uh, but like after three months he left the school and just began to wander through the life which yeah what what uh, could we expect from him and he very quickly became a criminal which um, well I think it was uh, quite obvious uh, by his acting but you will see he started committing not only normal crimes uh, such as theft but uh, he was prosecuted for extortion, abuse, rape, abuse and rape the animals. Yeah, I told you it will be brutal story. Uh, and until he was 27, uh, he spent a total of about eight years in prison that's insane so uh, he didn't know much uh, anything else in life so he did nothing but uh, trouble you know he went to jail then he got released and then it all happened again all over again so as I said things didn't look very good uh, with him from the beginning uh, horrible the, the horrible will come uh, and who uh, as for the animals uh, that's chapter itself um, I don't want to uh, go into the details here but he worked with animals so uh, he spent time with cows, uh, sheep, horses and as is probably clear I don't want to really go into the details as is probably clear uh, to everyone zoophilia manifested itself in him plus he was sadist so yeah it's simple and I think we all understand and it's horrible uh, I was um, pretty sad about it and like many murderers from a young age he also uh, started harming a small animals uh, such as frogs 
and this is insane he wrapped them in the rag and then set it on fire like who do that or he tied a chicken by the leg and watch it struggle and also cats and those small animals and all of this is very very brutal I think uh, and at the age of 16 he attacked kidnapped tortured and raped mentally ill woman and then he brutally attacked another woman and uh, luckily he didn't do anything worse uh, to her uh, but he did not only harm other people and animals, but also he uh, harmed uh, himself. He was uh, cutting his wrists, he was cutting down there and stabbing a wire into, the, into his stomach. I can't even imagine that's <sighs> he was very disturbed, uh, addicted to alcohol and drugs and attempted suicide several times. And the worst is the doctors knew about it because uh, he did not have to do the mandatory military service. Uh, so due to his mental condition, uh, he, you know, didn't have to go there. So, and I'm thinking about why didn't do anything with him, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. And to my surprise, uh, Stefan later in 80s found a wife. I don't get it. Don't ask me. It was young Maria. Maria already had a child, a two-year-old girl. And after two years of living together, Maria and Stefan, they had a daughter together. I don't understand how someone can uh, have a man like this. I don't know. They lived in uh, their own house and it probably won't surprise you that the relationship was not entirely ideal. Like, it was really not happy marriage. Which I think we all understand. And I don't understand really that he had a wife. Anyway, Stefan behaved just like his father. I'm not surprised. Uh, he was an alcoholic and when he got drunk, he was very aggressive. And that happened on the fateful day of October uh, 30, 1987. It's a story from the worst horror story we all can imagine. Uh, it happened almost on Halloween, so that w that's why it should be um, on Halloween here <clears throat> on my channel. And it's really creepy, like it almost happened on Halloween. Well. During the morning of that day, Stefan and his friends help uh, another friend to cut the wood. And during uh, this, they drank alcohol, but it wasn't only a beer, but also a hard alcohol. And yeah, that's a very good idea when you're working with uh, an axe and saw, you know, drinking alcohol, very good idea. He was an uh, alcoholic, so he was quite used uh, to drinking. 
and well anyway when they finished the work you know with the wood they were given two liters of wine as a thank you so great more alcohol uh, and all they could think of was going to the pub and drinking the whole time so they were drinking really from the morning until they went to bed and at about 10 in the evening uh, Stefan fell asleep somewhere outside on the bench and at about 11 uh, he finally went home and this is where it started well he came home the house was uh, empty and there was silence and the dark of course uh, so he thought everyone was uh, asleep but they wasn't inside the house and you know that was uh weird for for him uh and they had something like a summer annex near the house so he went there uh, because he thought the wife and the kids will be there but it was locked and that made him very very angry uh, and Maria knew that uh, when Stefan drinks alcohol he is aggressive so uh, she hid there with the children and locked the door oh my god at that time by the way Maria was pregnant so she was expecting her third child and that's horrible anyway he started uh, banging on the door and he started screaming uh, you know to uh, like let me go in there uh, things like that and uh, Maria told him through the door uh, to go to go where he came from you know like go where you came from I don't want you here and those words started everything he totally lost control he ran for an axe and he broke the lock with it and he got inside the children and Maria uh, were sleeping in the bed and um, she didn't want to uh, respond to him at all so uh, she turned uh, away and went back to sleep and that was that was bad because this made Stefan very very angry so he started hitting Maria with an axe uh, until he killed her and don't forget the kids the kids were of course still there in the bed so they started to wake up and uh, Stefan started hitting them with uh, the axe just like Maria and that's horrible like when you think about it it's like really from the worst nightmare this is where the story could end at, uh, and it would be still a very gruesome and brutal but unfortunately this is where it just begins I warned you and I'm warning you again it's very not nice to listen this the sight of the blood that was really everywhere uh, on the bed on the floor everywhere on the furniture uh, that was uh, made Stefan sexually excited 
I don't really get it. He went to the kitchen for a knife. He turned his wife over on the bed and cut her from the neck down. He cut off her breasts and then started taking out of her entrails and throwing them all over the place. And it's horrible, but including the unborn baby. I don't want to even imagine how it looks uh, like there. Uh, what's is, what is worse? He was doing well over the tasseled body. I don't know how to say that, but he just made well for himself. I think you understand me. Uh, then he put the bodies of the two daughters in a potato bag and tried to take them to the forest where he wanted to hide them. So, uh, he went outside, but a short distance from the house, he changed his mind and returned back to the house. <sighs> he took the bodies out of the bag and with a knife and razor blades like he had a razor blade uh it, it, he found it on the on the thing he dismembered both bodies i don't know what maniac this was but this is really one of the most brutal story i uh, heard so far about well, anyway, during this, a dog started started barking somewhere and it scared him and he woke up from, from his trance. He was like in trance. So he woke up, he saw the carnage all over and he decided he had to wash up because he was covered in blood, of course. So it was like nothing happened he he uh washed himself put on a clean clothes and he left the house and he left the murdered wife and two kids and one unborn baby there he he tossed the blood-stained clothes into the pile of wood and he went towards uh the city and he stopped uh, at an abandoned cabin he found there and he hid there so and he fell asleep there and when he woke up uh, he continued on then he broke into his parents former house and decided to commit a suicide there which is, it wasn't uh, not anything new to him. So he cut himself with the knife and the razors uh, in his pocket and then wanted to hang himself. Well, he found a jump rope in the house. So he tried to hang himself, but the jump rope could not support his weight, so it broke and Stefan fell from height to the ground. So he didn't kill himself, he hit his head and uh, he was unconsciousness. It was, I think it was, um, I found information, it was uh, high, uh, you know, from the ceiling to the ground. Uh, when he woke up, uh, it could have been a few hours, uh, of course, uh, I'm not sure. And he got scared again by a truck passing by and decided to run away from the house. So it was the same like he got uh, scared when he heard the dog barking. So uh, he was 
uh, of course covered in blood because he cut himself and he went outside and this is interesting because he met uh, a police car uh, that was parked there and he went straight to the policeman and immediately confessed that's I don't really understand this person but it's good of course so several days had passed since the attack so the police were actively looking for him so of course he uh, they knew about uh, Stefan uh, and uh, he was of course suspect but when he uh, said hey it was me it was uh, nothing to talk about so he was in custody he being interrogated and uh, being prepared for the trial he was described as an aggressive psychopathic personality with uh, tendencies towards uh, necrophilia zoophilia and uh, sadomasochism and plus he was an, uh, an alcoholic be careful about what I'm saying now because that's horrible but he described these murders as his deepest sex experience I have no words he never showed remorse uh, for his wife and two daughters and correction of this person was not possible which of course we understand and therefore he was sentenced to death by hanging and I think that's 100% right sentence it happened on June 8 1989 and he was the last executed person in Slovakia so that's all that's all for today's brutal story uh, I, I don't know what to say mm. I was thinking about imagine to be the policeman or the policemen who are uh, the poli I mean the police uh, who are there like what uh, what they must saw there I was so stupid I was really stupid of course to google this case and I click on the images so yeah don't do that it's horrible well that's all for today's story uh, it was horrible and I have I have no words for it and uh, I warned you it's a brutal story and well that's all see you in another true crime story uh, be safe take care and well, have a nice day. Bye.